Even as a baby, Paul Bunyan was mighty big. How big? Well, he was so big that his parents had to use a covered wagon for his cradle. As you might imagine, young Paul Bunyan had a big appetite. He gobbled up five barrels of porridge a day, and his parents had to milk four dozen cows every morning and evening just to keep his baby bottle filled. Paul was so big, it caused some problems in the little town in Maine where he grew up. When he sneezed, he blew the birds from Maine to California. When he snored, the neighbors ran out of their houses hollering, Earthquake! Earthquake! After that, Paul's father thought it might be better if Paul didn't sleep in town. He built a cot on a large raft for Paul and floated it off the coast. Paul slept on the raft for a few nights, but the floating cot didn't work out. When Paul turned over in his sleep, he created gigantic waves that knocked down houses along the coast. Eventually, Paul's father decided that the East Coast was just too small for Paul Bunyan. The only sensible thing to do was to move out west. So the Bunyan family moved to Minnesota. In those days, Minnesota was full of logging camps, sawmills, and lumberjacks. Americans were moving west and building the country. They had to cut down a lot of trees to make their homes, not to mention their schools, churches, boats, and furniture. When he grew up, Paul Bunyan went to work as a lumberjack. And what a lumberjack he proved to be! He made himself a giant axe with a handle carved out of a full-grown hickory tree. He could bring down a giant tree with a single swing of his axe. As the tree tipped over, he would yell, Timber! So the other lumberjacks had time to get out of the way. Everyone looked up to Paul Bunyan, way up. The other lumberjacks were full of admiration for him. The bosses were grateful for the amazing amount of work he could do in a day. Paul had a big heart too, but one thing he always wished for was a true friend. There simply wasn't anybody else his size who could be his friend. That all changed during the winter of the big blue snow. It was called the winter of the big blue snow because it was so cold that everyone shivered and turned blue. Even the snow shivered and turned blue. One day, as Paul made his way through the blue snowdrifts, he heard a muffled whimper. He followed the noise until he saw two big blue furry things sticking up out of the snow. He reached down and gave a pull. It turned out that the two big blue furry things were two big blue ears. And connected to the big blue ears was a giant blue baby ox. Paul exclaimed, the poor little fellow is half frozen. Paul carried the blue ox home, wrapped him in blankets, and fed him. The baby ox was so content that he took a long nap in Paul's big, strong arms. When he woke up, he looked up at Paul, and do you know what he said? Mama! Mama! And then he gave Paul a big, slobbery lick on the face. Paul laughed and said, Babe, we're going to be great friends. And they were. In fact, Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox were soon inseparable. Everywhere Paul went, Babe went too. The two of them worked together in the lumber camps. Paul chopped down the trees, then Babe hauled them to the river and dropped them in so they could float downstream to a sawmill. Together, Paul and Babe did the work of a hundred men. The lumber company figured the best way to keep Paul Bunyan happy was through his stomach. So they hired a special cook to feed Paul and Babe. The cook's name was Sourdough Sam. Sourdough Sam was known for the giant flapjacks he cooked in the world's biggest frying pan. The colossal pan sat on an enormous cast iron frame. Every morning, Sourdough Sam would build a raging forest fire underneath the pan. Then, he would call for his two helpers, 
Lars Larsen, and Pete Peterson. Lars and Pete would grease up the pan by tying slabs of bacon to their feet and skating back and forth across the sizzling pan. Then Sourdough Sam would make a giant stack of pancakes for Paul, an even larger stack for Babe. Thanks to Sourdough Sam and his overgrown flapjacks, Babe eventually grew to be even bigger than Paul. He was so big that if you were standing at his front legs, you had to use a telescope to see all the way up to his back legs. In fact, he was so heavy that his footprints filled up with water and turned into lakes. In fact, there are more than 10,000 lakes in Minnesota today, and most of them were created by Babe the Blue Ox back in the frontier days. Babe and Paul helped the lumberjacks solve all sorts of problems. Once, there was a river that was full of twists and turns. Sometimes the trees would get stuck in the turns and never make it downstream to the sawmill. But Paul Bunyan thought of a way to fix that. He went to one end of the river and sent Babe to the other end. Paul grabbed the river and pulled in one direction. Babe pulled the other end in the opposite direction. Then snap! Just like that, all of the kinks were pulled out and the river was as straight as an axe handle. Of course, this tightening operation left the river a good deal longer than it had been before, and there was a lot of extra water lying around. Paul and Babe worked together to dig five big holes to hold all the extra water. Nowadays, these are called the Great Lakes. One day, the logging bosses got to talking. One of them said that the United States was a fine country to be sure, but it could still stand a little improvement. For one thing, it could use a few more rivers. And what it really needed was a big river running right down the middle of the country, all the way from Minnesota down to New Orleans. If we had a river like that, the man said, we could ship timber down to New Orleans and all around the world. Paul Bunyan happened to overhear this conversation. He told the bosses he would see what he could do. He hitched up Babe and they started plowing south. As they plowed, they threw a great mound of dirt and rocks to the right and a smaller mound to the left. On the right side, they made the Rocky Mountains and on the left side, they made the Appalachian Mountains. Paul Bunyan and Babe didn't stop until they had plowed a channel all the way south to the Gulf of Mexico. And the river that flows in that channel nowadays, that's what we call the Mississippi River. From that day on, Paul and Babe went around the country using their size and strength to help anyone who needed it. Later, they dug the Grand Canyon as they made their way to the west coast of California. And when the wind blows just right from the west, you can still smell those infamous colossal pancakes cooking on the frontier. Okay, we can go ahead and turn our cameras back on. So now I want you to go ahead and under reading. You're going to find that assignment this tall tale Paul Bunyan. I want you to open up the slides and answer the questions just like we did for the other story. Three slides. You want to make sure you answer the question on all three slides and then I'll give you a little bit of time and we'll go over the answers to the questions. That way if we need to we can go ahead and fix them. Who can tell me for characters? Who were the characters in this story? Kylie? I would say this story had two main characters. Who are the two main characters, Kylie? Paul and Babe. Paul Bunyan and Babe. They did mention a couple of other people, but they were the, the main characters, with 
Paul Bunyan and Avon. What about the setting? Where was the setting? Jadine? It was in the Northwest or in the West. So they, they did travel around a bit, right? They went from like place to place. There was one place where most of the story happened though. Ezekiel? It might be a forest or the woods. Okay, the woods or the forest. A lot of the story happened there. We could be a little more specific. Who remembers? There was a name of the state where this was this was happening. Alexa, do you remember the name of the state? Minnesota. Minnesota. So we could put the forest or the woods. Ah, uh, hold on. There we go. Forest or the woods. Or if we wanted to be specific. We would put Minnesota. And a lot of this was happening during the day, right? We can put during the day. What about the point of view? Was this a first person story or a third person story? Kylie? Third person. This is a third person story because Paul Bunyan is not telling us the story. Babe is not telling us the story. So this is third person. What about the author's purpose? Why did the author write this story of Paul Bunyan? Alexa? To entertain people. To, to entertain people. What about the theme or the lesson? Who can tell me what do you think the theme or the lesson was for Paul Bunyan? What do you think, Kylie? I think the lesson was it doesn't matter if you're big or small. Okay. So at first when he was a baby, he kind of was causing lots of problems, right? Because he was so big. But then when he grew up, it ended up being a really good thing that he was so big. What do you think, Jadine? And me? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't really have like a theme or like I do have it, but I kind of, I have like another character what? in oh, like God. the villagers because they're like also in the story like a lot. That's true. The people around him, the other, um, the other lumberjacks, put them. Okay, so Kylie said about doesn't matter if you're big or small. The other thing that I was thinking for this story was that everybody, kind of like the the story we saw yesterday with the paintbrush, that everybody has different skills, because. Paul Bunyan was able to do a lot of things that other people weren't, right? They talked about him carving the Grand Canyon. They talked about him and Babe uh, straightening out a river and making lakes and stuff like that. And other people wouldn't have been able to do that. So I think maybe the theme could be like, like kind of like Kylie said, that even when, when he was young, that being big was a big problem. But like you said, when he got older, was being big a problem anymore? Okay, so we could write something like um, being different and help. And for the lesson learned, we could maybe write something like um, everybody has different skills or everyone can help. Noah, you have a question or are you just ready for the next one? Um, I do have one more person for uh, the characters. Oh, what do you think? The people who made their food. 
Oh, that's right. So the the cooks for them, right? They told us the um, that there was sourdough Sam, who was the person who made the pancakes, and that they had the people who had to skate around and and with bacon on their feet on the pan. 